Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create quotes in 360. Before I go too far, let me explain that this is not the only way or the only path to creating a quote. That is simply the most common for me and uh, the one that I use the most often. You'll notice that as we go through other videos that there are multiple areas to create one action from another section in 360. But for today, let's start out by going to our quotes list page which you select right here. And then when you get to your list page of quotes, you're gonna see a blue link on the right that says add a quote. So let's start from there. Our first page here you're gonna see is the tabs across the top um, are, not, are all highlighted out gray except for these first two here. Now the reason for that is that these are required. You have to have information in here before you can add to the others. So let's start with our customer info. I'm going to give this quote a name. And in this scenario, I'm going to create this quote with a new customer. I'm going to add a new customer on the fly. I'm also going to show you how you can create a quote using existing customer information. So let's start out by entering a name for the company. As I'm doing this, I want you to see, if I have existing customers, as I'm dialing in over here, it's going to draw from my existing customer database and see if any of these are the ones that this quote pertains to. For this, again, I would, so I would click on one of these that would start for an existing customer, but for this scenario, I'm going to create a new customer. Company name, now I'm going to give a contact. Some of these fields are required and some of them are not. Um, for the sake of best practice, <clears throat> I always recommend adding as much information as you can right now. It's just going to save you from having to do it later. And sometimes it's good to get this in early, especially where contact information is concerned. So the name, phone number, I always try to get at least the name, the phone number, and the email. Where it says primary, this is just asking if you'd like to indicate this contact as the primary contact for this customer. Because this is a new customer and this is my first contact in there, I'm going to list it as the primary. It's always good to have one in that space. The other option that I have here is to select whether or not I would like to add this contact to the customer's profile. There are exceptions in which you'll have a project that has a contact that is not associated with that customer otherwise. So they're just there for that job. It could be a freelance project manager or a third party agent of any kind. And so most of the time you will select to add to customer profile, but sometimes that doesn't apply. So in this case, I'm going to select to add this to the customer profile. Now I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna start my, my address here. As you can see, I've typed some of this information in before. Now I've entered my address and my city and my state. Um, a convenience tool that we have here is if you don't know the zip code, which frequently happens, uh, at least in some of the experiences we have, that the salespeople would pass on some of the information but would not have the zip code. So in this case, you can hit look up and it will find the zip code for you. Now notice here it says recipient address, then down here we have job site, and that is because they may or may not be one and the same. So. I can have a completely unique job site address for this quote. In this case, I'm going to say that they are the same. And there's the convenience of having that pre-populate for you. So I'm going to save that. And you'll see up here on the top right, it tells me that it was saved successfully. It's, for, it's playing back the page for me and the customer that I've created. Now I'm going to go to job info. And with customer information in place, now I'm going to add information that relates to the, the job that's being quoted here. I'm gonna say that some of these don't apply. Request start date, quote date, I'm gonna say that they want this by the 19th. So I can set some milestones for myself. 
we'll start the quote on the 12th. Actually, as you can see the rush approval required. That's a feature that you can have or you can have turned off. But well, let's go like this. There we go. In the scope of work, you usually want to put something about the job. I'm going to keep it simple here. But this information is for internal use only. And it's to the benefit of a quote that might have more than one person working on it. So let's say you have more than one estimator, or let's say that uh, the office administrator has got it started and then the estimator is going to take over. In this case, it just gives something about the scope of work. You can get as detailed as you want in here. I'm going to save this information. And now I'm going to create the items in the quote. So far, uh, this information is internal. Now when I get here, this is the information that's going to go out to the customer and also going to create some of my work instructions or job descriptions. When it comes to the job items inside of a quote, there's a lot of ways you can go about this. None of them are right or wrong. It's just a matter of how you want to organize your quote. You can organize all of the work under one job item here, or you can also break it out into individual line items. So that's entirely up to you. For this quote, I'm gonna create a couple of job items just so that you can see how it works. So I'm gonna call this job item one, and I'm going to uh, give it some instructions. Looking down here, I'm going to put some estimates on this um, using pricing formulas that we will put in for you. You can say that this is going to take, let's say, four hours uh, at our technician rate. That's doing the math for me. Quantity of one person at that. If it was two, so that was two journeymen at four hours at $80 each. And let's say that I'm going to put an apprentice on there. At $50 an hour, one of those, and let's say that I'm going to use $350 worth of materials and down here notice in my cost total see how this is blank with this number next to it you can this is what the suggested total is you can enter your own in here or you can select it right there most of the time this is what you will do um, but remember to click to do one or the other. You don't want to leave this blank. So I can also multiply this by a quantifier if I want to. In this case, I'm going to leave it just at one. And if you look on the right now over here, you'll see that I've created my first job item. Let's make another one. Okay, some job instructions, same thing. And now with this one, I'm going to say it only takes one technician at one hour. Now let's say it's two hours with for one person. Does my math for me. My equipment, I'm going to use $75 worth of equipment. My math is done for me down here, and I'm going to select that. Remember to click on this if you want it to appear in the box. Now I've saved this, and as you can see on the right now, I have two job items that I've created for this quote. Looking across here, there's a lot of other things that can take place. Um, for this demonstration, I'm going to talk about the review and adjust and the sending quote options. And then we will come back in some other videos and talk about some of these other tabs that exist in this folder. So let's go to review and adjust. Let's take a look at the quote that I've created. All my information is here. I have a couple options here I want to explain briefly. Um, this pertains to how you want your quote to display for your customer. So, so let's say that I've created multiple items and I, these are different options and I don't want to display the total. So I can opt out of showing the total and it's just going to break out each line item and show that in the quote. Now likewise I can decide to show the total cost, but let's say that I don't want to break down the pricing. 
Now it's just going to show the total, and my line items will still exist, but they won't have individual pricing next to them. So now at the bottom here, here's my suggested total. Again, I have options to adjust it by the dollar value or by the percentage value. <clears throat> For this scenario, I'm going to leave it just like it is. And there we have it. So the next thing that I'm going to do, obviously, is send the quote to my customer. So I'll show you two ways to do it. One is this link down on the bottom here that you see email quote. Uh, and that's definitely one way of taking care of it. I'm going to show you a different way that I like better because it allows you to do more at one time. If you look over two tabs over and you see your messages tab here, let's go ahead and select that. And I'm going to create a message now, which is my right button over here. Create a new message. And since I'm in this quotes folder, <clears throat> there's intelligence built into it already. I'm gonna call it my available contacts. Here's the person I'm sending it to. It auto dials my email for me. I can create a distribution list if I want to. I can add other people from the employee and contact side for this. Let's give it a subject. Okay. Now, when you look down here, you're going to see that my proposal or my quote is all ready for me. It's, it's been uh, created as a PDF file and it's automatically attached, it, it's available for attaching to this message. So I'm going to say yes to that. Now the good part of this is that in addition to that, this document, if I had uploaded any others in this folder, I would also be able to attach them simultaneously with this outgoing message so that I can kill two birds with one stone instead of having to go back and find these files, it's going to have them all organized here and available for me. Likewise, I can click my browse button and I can upload any file that I want at the time from my own hard drive. When I hit my send, I can notify by email as well as sending through the system. And I've decided now that I'm going to go ahead and send this quote. And there you have it. While it's thinking, message has been successfully sent, stored in here, so it's trackable, and your quote is off to your customer. Okay, so I want to go backtrack one more, and I want to show you how you can look at your quote before you send it. Go down to the bottom on your review and adjust page, which is this tab right here, and let's look at print quote. And what it will do is now it's exporting all the information we've put in into a PDF format. And it creates PDF for you here. So your logo on top, um, all of our forms and documents are customized for you. So this is going to show the information you need it to show. A breakout of the items, a total price and any other details that you need. If you have contract language that needs to attach with this, we can make sure that that goes along with your quote. And of course, the quote will save itself in the system here as well. So that's the basics for sending a quote. I'm going to put up some other videos here that talk about managing quotes and also creating revisions and copies of quotes. And finally, how to convert a quote into an active job. Thanks for watching.